As I'm approaching my mid thirties, I thought this is a great time to do this video. I get a lot of people round about my age, give or take, asking me or commenting on a post or commenting on a video saying, am I too late? Is it too late to start? I'm gonna tell you straight off the bat, it's not too late. It's never too late to get started. The problem is when we're about, yeah, I think it's the age of 30, we start to lose muscle, like due to sarcopenia, at the rate of around three to 5% every decade after 30. And when we get to about 70 or uh, 70, 80, we've got about 50% of the muscle we, want, we once had. But that is only if we do nothing about it. If we do something about it, which is what I'm gonna to go to later in this video, we can prevent this and we can gain a significant amount of muscle and look great into our 60s, 70s and 80s. So it's definitely not too late to start it. One of the main obstacles people put in their own way, they put it literally in their own way is the mindset. They, you know, they have this mindset where okay, I'm you know, 30, I've got kids, I've got a family, I can't commit to training this much or this much, whatever it is. It's always a number that's just not necessary, for example. There's always like, I can't train every day, you know, I can't eat six to eight meals a day. I'm here to tell you, you don't need to do these things. There are specific things to follow to build muscle when you're over 30. And those things are similar to the things you follow when you're under 30. But I'm gonna go into them in more detail in this video and explain to you how they can apply to you and how you can use them to build muscle in your 30s and beyond. Generally speaking, the process of building muscle is slower than the process of losing body fat. However, if you're a beginner, you can lose fat and build muscle and more or less the same weight same rate even, not the same weight. Yeah, probably the same weight, but you can do it at more or less the same rate. When you approach that 10 years plus in experience and you're looking to continue to gain muscle, you'd be lucky to gain a few pounds a year. But even those few pounds can make a big difference to your physique, especially if it's more or less pure muscle. So there's no reason to get disheartened at the, at the time it takes to build muscle it does take a while, but it compounds over time. One of the first recommendations I make is actually to not try and get lean before you build muscle. And that's mainly if you're in your first few years of training. I suggest not trying to focus on just getting as lean as possible before you start the muscle building pro process. Start right away. Start immediately. You can build muscle and lose fat at the exact same time, especially and mo most effectively within your first few years of training. So if you're starting out now, this is prime time to you know hone in on those newbie gains, hone in on those beginner gains, and focus on a plan and stick with it. I'm going to get into obviously the nitty gritty on how you're going to do that. But remember, don't try and just focus all your efforts on getting lean. You'll lose some muscle on a process. You can watch any of the videos I did on this. I did on body recomposition or building muscle and losing fat at the same time by clicking above or waiting till the end and watching those videos. And if you haven't clicked that like button, click that now and subscribe for future videos as well. It really helps the channel grow. This is <laughs> this is an obvious one, but you need to follow a well-structured resistance training program. I say obvious one, but too many people do not follow a well-structured resistance training program. I know a lot of people, and I see a lot of people, that go straight into like circuit training, like HIT, like F45. Zero problem with that, like it's completely fine. But if you want to build the most amount of muscle, it's not the most effective way to do it. A well-structured resistance training program that focuses on progression is key to build mus building muscle, and especially when you're trying to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. You need to make sure you're doing about 10 to 20 hard sets for each muscle group per week. And also alongside that, you need to be making sure you're training your muscles. I would say that you can still get like humongous benefits of training, sing doing single body part routines like chest, shoulders, back, legs and arms, but it's not the most efficient and it's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to train your muscles twice per week, something like a full body, 
push pull legs, upper lower split, something along those lines where you'll be training each muscle twice per week. That's gonna give it enough stimulus to grow and making sure you're taking each set to, I'd say between one to three reps away from failure, mainly one to two, and one would be more or less on the compound movement, than on the isolation movements even, and about two to three on the compound movements, and making sure you've got progression in mind. I personally prefer a double progression model, which means each week you're gonna focus on not just increasing the weight, you're gonna focus on increasing the number of reps, and when you hit the say you're doing eight to 12 reps. When you hit like three sets of 12, the next week you increase the weight slightly. And if it's a compound move, you can increase the weight by, uh, I'd say between two and a half to five pounds. If it's more of an isolation move, just the next level up, say for instance, on a cable machine. Focus on getting stronger. Focus on getting stronger in the compound lifts you do. I do talk quite a bit on my Instagram about you know, not always getting stuck in a mindset you like you have to squat, deadlift, and bench press. But starting out as a beginner, it's a great idea to include squats, like a bench press and a deadlift into your routine. It gets you used to those different movement patterns and gets you strong in those specific movements. Then the rest of the routine can be a mixture between isolation and other compound movements as well. But make sure you're focused on getting stronger over time. It doesn't have to be week in, week out. We're not robots. We can't get stronger week in, week out. So focus on getting stronger over time, over the four week period, over the six week period, over the eight week, 12 week, over the year, over two years, just focus on that kind of uh, strength, those kind of strength increases, and then you're always gonna be motivated because you're seeing your numbers going up and you know the realistic time frame, they're going to go up. They're not gonna go up every week. To begin with, they may, but don't expect that sort of progress. It'll lead to injuries long term. When it comes to nutrition, the two key things here are calories and protein. If you get these numbers right, you're gonna see great results. The way you split up carbs and fats are less important. So long as you're getting sufficient amount of carbs, I would say don't go lower than 35% of your calories from carbs, and obviously the rest can be fat. But if you get those, just protein and calories, just track those alone, you're gonna see great results. When it comes to protein, you wanna be aiming between 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, and that's around 0.7 to one gram per pound of body weight. So a lot of people will just give you a hard one answer to that and just say, you need one gram per pound of body weight, and that's it. No, you can still get results within that range, but find, find that, you know, that sweet spot. I do suggest going more on the higher, so more on the 0.8 per pound, or like around two, grams per kilo body weight. That's gonna make sure you get sufficient protein and you can mix it up in terms of plant-based sources and obviously if, well, if you're a vegan, all plant-based sources, but if you're an omnivore, you're gonna be having dairy sources, plant-based sources, uh, fish, meat, and whatnot as well. I'll do a video separately on the different types of protein and, and rank them for you in terms of convenience and digestibility as well. So that those things are key. And I reckon, well not I reckon, I suggest starting at maintenance calories to see how you feel with maintenance calories for a few weeks, see how your body adapts, it may give it about six weeks, eight weeks, then you can adjust. You can adjust accordingly. You can either say, okay, if you're lean enough, if you're happy with how lean you are, you can add a very slight surplus going about 5%, 10% maximum. If, you're, if you wanna get leaner, you can say to yourself, mm, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not losing fat at the rate I wanna lose it. You can go to a slight deficit, like five to 10%, depending on how much body fat you've got. You may go all the way up to 15 to 20%, but do that gradually, see how your body responds. You don't wanna sacrifice muscle just for just sacrificing muscle for the sake of it, for just being impatient. You need to be patient and consistent. Remember, going back to the training, the number one thing is consistency. It doesn't matter if you have the best plan in the world. If you don't have consistency built into your routine, you're not gonna see the results you want. You need to be patient. Muscle building takes time, but I can tell you now, it's worth it in so many different ways. Okay, the next one. Make sure you prioritize recovery. When you're prioritizing recovery, I don't just mean sleep, but sleep is great. 
you need to make sure you're getting between seven and nine hours a night of sleep. I'd say minimum seven hours a night. You're going to repair, recover. You're going to support your hormones like how they should be supported and you're going to build more muscle and lose more fat over time if you get enough sleep but also taking those rest days are so important go for a walk spend time with friends family do other activities outside of the gym do things that relax you maybe go to the sauna maybe go for a steam maybe re whatever relaxes you within reason um <laughs> do that on a rest day and recover well. When you recover well, when you come back to your workouts, you're gonna feel amazing. You're gonna feel like you can hit uh, new heights in terms of working out, and you're gonna feel much better as well in terms of the, your joints, in terms of your muscle, in terms of your energy levels. And I left this one to last, while obviously it's important, but it's not of key importance. I do suggest getting your blood work done yearly, or at least, at least yearly or even every six months. If you're over 40, this is particularly important as well. We can see our hormone levels, we can see our vitamin levels, and we can make corrections where possible. If you do find you're on a lower side of testosterone, then I would suggest trying to increase that naturally before going down the route of TRT and HRT. Because once you go down that route, there's no going back, basically. So don't be so quick to jump on that. Don't just go to the first TRT specialist and they'll be like, oh, okay, you've got low testosterone, but wait, you're not sleeping, you're not recovering properly, but oh yeah, well, you know what we'll do? We won't change any of your lifestyle habits, we'll just shove you on TRT. That's not the way to go about it, especially if you have excess body fat, you're more than likely to have low testosterone levels. So remember, don't just jump straight to TRT, get the blood works done, make the adjustments, make the lifestyle adjustments, and then go from there. And that's just about all from this video. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Any questions regarding this video, or any questions regarding building muscle or losing fat when it comes to training or nutrition, happy to answer them. If any of you have got any ideas on a video you would like to see next as well, drop that in the description below. Click that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share with a friend if you found this useful. That really helps the channel grow, doing all those things at once. Obviously, if you click the subscribe button, don't click it again, that'll unsubscribe you. But yeah, you get the gist of it. Share with a friend, interact with this, and I promise you I'm gonna keep putting out videos, and these videos are gonna help you achieve your goals. And follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I, I do post different content around on Instagram, so that's another place to check me out and see what I'm up to, basically. And until the next video, as always, keep pushing those limits.